meningitis. Meningitis is the inflammation of the meninges, the protective membrane surrounding the brain and the spinal cord. Bacteria such as Haemophilus viruses like measles, mumps and rubella and some drugs such as non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs can cause meningitis. Even parasites such as Toxoplasmosis gondii. Ooh. Hippocrates in ancient Greece in the year 460 to 370 BC was the first to describe the condition meningitis. In the year 1944, penicillin was used to treat meningitis and stop it spreading. In the late 20th century, causes of meningitis dropped. Why? The haemophilus vaccine was given to the population. In 2002, research showed that treatment improved the prognosis of bacterial meningitis with steroids. The meningitis belt, stretching from Senegal to Ethiopia, has the highest rate in the world of meningitis of 88,000 cases and 5,000 deaths of Group A meningitis. In the UK, since 1992, vaccines have prevented thousands of deaths. Although there are several vaccines against meningitis, there is no vaccine against meningococcal Group B. If you survive bacterial meningitis, many patients still have problems such as memory and tension problems, brain damage or intellectual defects. Viral meningitis is an inflammation of the thing of the brain caused by viral infections. For example, herpes, mumps, polio or enteroviruses. It is important to recognize the earliest sign before the other symptoms. The earliest signs include muscles, limbs or joint pain. After that, it's really easier for us to divide the symptoms into the two sections early symptoms and later symptoms. In early symptoms, we got strong headache, vomiting or nausea. And in later symptoms, we got like fits, confusion or like instant breathing rate. Usually, viral meningitis occurs suddenly. Some of the patients have rush all over the body, you can see on the slide. The main signs and symptoms of viral meningitis is like fever, headache, nausea or like neck tension. In infant, viral meningitis begins gradually and it starts to be like refuse to eat, then spinal muscles. Also, some of the children may remain in weakness, fatigue, headaches, muscle spasms, sleep disorders, behavioral changes for several months and after the disease. meningitis. The most common type nowadays is streptococcus pneumonia. That's why we're going to focus on this particular example. It is found in nasopharynx of healthy adults, about 4%, and children, around 37%. The rudimentary is clearly explained on a slide. Streptococcus pneumonia possesses the ability to attach to epithelial cells via the glycoconjugates. The transmission is enforced by holin binding protein and the platelet binding factor. The immune responses are stimulated by Bacterial autolysis, releasing of bacterial products, of which the most toxic is pneumolysin, releasing of bacterial several components, which include lipopolysaccharides, tachoic acid, and peptidoglycans, and there is also a DNA release. Immune responses include a range of different events, for example, production and activation of inflammatory mediators, activation of enzymes, Activation of cytokines. Now we go to viral meningitis. The mechanism of entry includes hematogen spread, which means via the bloodstream. They are also carried in infected leukocytes, for example, measles, mumps, or a HIV virus, or through peripheral or cranial nerves, examples, polio, rabies virus or the varicella Immune the responses include, for example, release of inflammatory cytokines, release of immunoglobulins, action of interferons, 
or triggering the cell death program apoptosis. Fungal and parasitic meningitis occur rarely, but if it usually concerns immunocompromised people. Cryptococcus neoformans is one of the fungal agents that may cause meningitis. Toxoplasma conti and acanthamoeba are a few examples of parasites which can cause meningeal inflammation. The mechanism in which Cryptococcus neoformans cause meningeal inflammation includes spreading from lungs to subarachnoid space. The tissue then may respond in two ways, namely gelatinous, which refers to mucoid degeneration, or granulomatous, referring to accumulation of histocytes, giant cells, and lymphocytes. Form exudate can then lead to formation of hydrocephalus. Parasitic meningitis, on the other hand, can be described as strong eosinophilic reaction around the parasite. Untreated leads to the neural degeneration, vascular damage, and stroke. There are also no infectious causes of meningitis, and drug-induced meningeal inflammation is one of them. Causative drugs include non-steroidal and anti-inflammatory drugs, antibiotics and intravenous immunoglobulins. There are two mechanisms of drug-induced meningitis. Drugs can cause direct irritation because of the differences in solubility, ionic contact, molecular size of PA or pH, or Meningeal inflammation arises as a result of hypersensitivity reaction, mainly type 1, type 3, and type 4. A variety of tests are performed to diagnose meningitis. Blood tests are carried out. The most essential test in distinguishing meningitis is by analyzing cerebrospinal fluid through lumbar puncture. Electrolytes in the blood are examined. For a lumbar puncture, a needle is then introduced into the dual sac to gather cere cerebrospinal fluid. In bacterial meningitis, cloudy CF CSF indicates that fluid contains either high levels of protein or white blood cells. For the diagnosis of drug-induced aseptic meningitis, there are no specific symptoms and signs for this type. That is why the diagnosis is based on exclusion of other possible causes. Caused meningitis can be easily observed under microscopical examination using the patient's cerebral Treatment for meningitis include intra intravenous ceftriaxone is given following the, spread of a, following the spread of a rash. Fluid must not be restricted. In patients showing symptoms of meningococcal septicemia, immediate fluid bolus of 20 ml per kilogram of sodium chloride 0.9% um, is given. If diagnosed with bacterial meningitis, antibiotic treatment should be initiated immediately. Reverse transcriptic PCR is the ideal standard to diagnose. To identify parasites, hematoxylin and eosin staining is the most commonly used method. Treatment of fungal meningitis includes the use of amphotericin and Itraconazole. Parasitic meningitis is treated with corticosteroids and albendazole or other antihelminitic agents. How to prevent meningitis? There are three ways to prevent meningitis. Firstly, lifestyle. Clean your hands properly, especially before eating, as pathogens can easily enter your body. Practice good hygiene. It is very important for pregnant women to take extreme care. Staying healthy, that means a good immune system, so the body can fight against the disease. Cover your mouth when coughing. This stops meningitis being spread from person to person. Another way to prevent meningitis is by taking antibiotics like rifampicin, but this does not protect against future infections. It has become the prime prevention of bacterial and viral meningitis. Some vaccines available for bacterial meningitis include MenC vaccine against Group C meningitis, HIP vaccine, which prevents against Haemophilus influenza type B. Vaccines available for viral meningitis are MMR against measles and mumps that lead to meningitis. Thank you for watching our meningitis presentation.